In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belshazzar. And the word was true, and it was a great conflict. And he understood the word and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. On the twenty-fourth day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, that is, the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a man clothed in linen, whose loins were belted with the gold of Uphaz. His body was like burl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and the sound of his words like the noise of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone and saw this great vision, and no strength was left in me. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed, and I retained no strength. Then I heard the sound of his words, and when I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, give heed to the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from this day that you set your mind to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. So I left him there with the prince of the kingdom of Persia, and came to make you understand what is to befall your people in the latter days. For the vision is for days yet to come. When he had spoken to me according to these words, I turned my face toward the ground and was speechless. And behold, one in the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke. I said to him who stood before me, O my Lord, by reason of the vision, pains have come upon me, and I retain no strength. How can my Lord's servant talk with my Lord? For now no strength remains in me, and no breath is left in me. Again one having the appearance of a man touched me and strengthened me, and he said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be with you, be strong and of good courage. And when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? But now I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I am through with him, behold, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. There is none who contends by my side against these except Michael, your prince. And as for me, in the first year of Darius the Mede, I stood up to confirm and strengthen him. And now I will show you the truth. Behold, three more kings shall arise in Persia, and a fourth shall be far richer than all of them. And when he has become strong through his riches, he shall stir up all against the kingdom of Greece. Then a mighty king shall arise, who shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he has arisen, his kingdom shall be broken and divided toward the four winds of heaven, but not to his posterity, nor according to the dominion with which he ruled, for his kingdom shall be plucked up and go to others besides these. Then the king of the south shall be strong, but one of his princes shall be stronger than he, and his dominion shall be a great dominion. After some years they shall make an alliance, and the daughter of the king of the south shall come to the king of the north to make peace, but she shall not retain the strength of her arm, and he and his offspring shall not endure, but she shall be given up, and her attendants, her child, and he who got possession of her. In those times a branch from her roots shall arise in his place. He shall come against the army and enter the fortress of the king of the north, and he shall deal with them and shall prevail. He shall also carry off to Egypt their gods and their molten images, and with their precious vessels of silver and of gold. And for some years he shall refrain from attacking the king of the north. Then the latter shall come into the realm of the king of the south, 
but shall return into his own land. His sons shall wage war and assemble a multitude of great forces, which shall come on and overflow and pass through, and again shall carry the war as far as his fortress. Then the king of the south, moved with anger, shall come out and fight with the king of the north, and he shall raise a great multitude, but it shall be given into his hand. And when the multitude is taken, his heart shall be exalted, and he shall cast down tens of thousands, but he shall not prevail. For the king of the north shall again raise a multitude, greater than the former, and after some years he shall come on with a great army and abundant supplies. In those times many shall rise against the king of the south, and the men of violence among your own people shall lift themselves up in order to fulfill the vision, but they shall fail. Then the king of the north shall come and throw up siege works, and take a well-fortified city. And the forces of the south shall not stand, or even his picked troops, for there shall be no strength to stand. But he who comes against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him. And he shall stand in the glorious land, and all of it shall be in his power. He shall set his face to come with the strength of his whole kingdom, and he shall bring terms of peace and perform them. He shall give him the daughter of women to destroy the kingdom, but it shall not stand or be to his advantage. Afterward, he shall turn his face to the islands and shall take many of them, but a commander shall put an end to his insolence. Indeed, he shall turn his insolence back upon him. Then he shall turn his face back toward the fortress of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and shall not be found. Then shall arise in his place one who shall send an exactor of tribute through the glory of the kingdom, but within a few days he shall be broken, neither in anger nor in battle. In his place shall arise a contemptible person to whom royal majesty has not been given. He shall come in without warning and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Armies shall be utterly swept away before him and broken and the prince of the covenant also. And from the time that an alliance is made with him, he shall act deceitfully, and he shall become strong and a small people. Without warning, he shall come into the richest parts of the province, and he shall do what neither his fathers nor his father's fathers have done, scattering among them plunder, spoil, and goods. He shall devise plans against strongholds, but only for a time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the kings of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall wage war with an exceedingly great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for plots shall be devised against him. Even those who eat his rich food shall be his undoing. His army shall be swept away, and many shall fall down slain. And as for the two kings, their minds shall be bent on mischief. They shall speak lies at the same table, but to no avail, for the end is yet to be at the time appointed, and he shall return to his land with great substance. But his heart shall be set against the holy covenant, and he shall work his will and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come into the south, but it shall not be his time as it was before. For this, for ships of Kittim, shall come against him, and he shall be afraid and withdraw, and shall turn back and be enraged and take action against the Holy Covenant. He shall turn back and give heed to those who forsake the Holy Covenant. Forces from him shall appear and profane the temple and fortress, and shall take away the continual burnt offering, and they shall set up the abomination that makes desolate. He shall seduce with flattery those who violate the covenant, but the people who know their God shall stand firm and take action. And those among the people who are wise shall make many understand, though they shall fall by the sword and flame, by captivity and plunder for some days. When they fall, they shall receive a little help, and many shall join themselves to them with flattery. And some of those who are wise shall fall to refine and to cleanse them, and to make them, wild, make them white until the time of the end, for it is yet for the time appointed. 
and the king shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak astonishing things against the god of gods. He shall prosper till the indignation is accomplished, for what is determined shall be done. He shall give no heed to the gods of his fathers, or to the one beloved by women. He shall not give heed to any other god, for he shall magnify himself above all. He shall honor the god of fortresses instead of these. A god whom his fathers did not know he shall honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and costly gifts. He shall deal with the strongest fortresses by the help of a foreign god. Those who acknowledge him he shall magnify with honor. He shall make them rulers over many, and shall divide the land for a price. Whoever winks his eye plans evil deeds, and no one can keep him from them. In your presence his mouth is all sweetness, and he admires your words, but later he will twist his speech, and with your own words he will give offense. I have hated many things, but none to be compared to him. Even the Lord will hate him. Whoever throws a stone straight up throws it on his own head, and a treacherous blow opens up wounds. He who digs a pit will fall into it, and he who sets a snare will be caught in it. If a man does evil, it will roll back upon him, and he will not know where it came from. Mockery and abuse issue from the proud man, but vengeance lies in wait for him like a lion. Those who rejoice in the fall of the godly will be caught in a snare, and pain will consume them before their death. Anger and wrath, these are also abominations, and the sinful man will possess them. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way which he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we sin deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful prospect of judgment and a fury of fire which will consume the adversaries. A man who has violated the law of Moses dies without mercy at the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the man who has spurned the Son of God and profaned the blood of of the covenant by which he was sanctified and outraged the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days when, after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings, sometimes being publicly exposed to abuse and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion on the prisoners, and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property, since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and an abiding one. Therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that you may do the will of God and receive what is promised. For yet a little while, and the coming one, shall come and shall not tarry. But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrink shrinks back, my soul has no, no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and keep their souls. The book of Daniel enlightens our reading of the New Testament in so many ways. But for Daniel, who did not have the fullness of the revelation of Jesus Christ, it must have been a frustrating and frightening experience. We see remarkable prophecy in his visions while he struggles to make sense of them. Daniel is an example of what is expressed in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. My righteous one shall live by faith. There may be times when we don't understand a particular scripture reading or church teaching, 
As Catholics, we are called to live by faith, faith in the Church that Jesus Christ established and faith in the Holy Spirit who guides her. That doesn't mean we shouldn't continue to strive for understanding. Our faith is not a blind faith, but a living, reasonable, and accessible faith. As Catholics, we are blessed to belong to a body that has millions of members, many of whom are saints, from Saints Jerome and Augustine to Saints Catherine of Siena and Therese of Lisieux. We are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses whose lives and writings help guide us in our faith. Do you allow the communion of the saints to be a part of your faith life?